All right, guys. So this is going to be like most of my videos, a video on Groth. And specifically, I'm going to be covering installing fonts. So got a pretty simple Groth file here that I was working with uh, pretty recently. And then when I compile it, you'll see that it uses the default font. Now, a lot of people like to use their own fonts. And so as a result from having to use the default fonts, it's always going to end up looking like this. It would be nice if you could use a different one. So now as an alternative, you can actually use custom fonts. So here's one that I set up before, which is actually using Computer Modern, which is the LaTeX font. And so for those of you guys that are used to work with LaTeX, this will look pretty familiar to you. Kind of gives it that LaTeX sort of look. So just to give you a contrast again, that's what it looks like. And then here's what it looks like with the LaTeX fonts. Now you could go a bit further and try and make sure that everything is using the LaTeX fonts. For example, the actual default symbols. Some of them do not actually default to the LaTeX options. And I'll probably cover that in a future video mostly because uh, doing that sort of stuff can get a bit complicated with Groff. But this video is mostly going to show you guys how to install these new fonts nice and easy, uh, pretty much as easy as possible. First off, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to this website. And this website is pretty simple. It's actually the website that contains a lot of the documentation for mom. So if you guys are mom macro fans, that's actually where this script that we'll be looking at today comes from, is from the same creator. So if you go to the mom website, you'll see that there's a spot for additional resources for Groff and mom. So we click there, there's a bunch of stuff, but there's also a section for installing fonts. So now if we just click on the HTML documentation, you'll see that there's actually a lot of details to installing these fonts. So in our case, we're actually going to kind of ignore this because it's, as you can see, pretty in depth and there's a lot to it. So instead of doing that, we're actually going to use this script right here. So if I just click on this, there's the install fonts thing and I'm just going to download it and then open up a terminal, go to my downloads directory. And now if I just chmod plus x to the install dash fonts dot sh, this will make it executable. So now after doing that, I can actually do dot slash install fonts sh and then dash h normally will give us some information and if we give it a capital h and pipe that into less it will give us a man page style format so we don't need our browser anymore and now we can look through it um, it's pretty simple when you look through it gives off all the options the major ones to look at are these two because there are actually two different prefix locations that you can actually have graph store your general information such as fonts and that is this location here and this location here now this is the default but in fact if you guys are using arch linux it's probably installed here so a good way to check is to actually just open up a terminal cd to one of the directories or even just do a test to see if the directory exists. And so when I cd'd here, it brought me to the actual directory. So that's fine, but to check and see if this one actually existed, I could just cd, oh, nothing was there, directory doesn't exist, therefore the top of my extra resources for Groff is not there. Now if you have Groff installed in a special directory, you can use this option and basically give it the directory to use as your top of your extra resources. Um, these are extra options that uh, you guys can set to basically tell it whether it should copy things over, whether it should add these options for Groff's PDF driver. Um, most of these things honestly like are pretty straightforward, but most of it that's a bit confusing is actually the format that you use to actually set up the font. So now to actually show off this feature, let's go ahead and actually do this with the computer modern fonts that I mentioned before. So let's just make a directory, yam, cdcm. All right, so we're gonna get this actual zip file. And so it's just gonna take a bit to actually get the file. Now we should have our zip file here. Then we're just gonna use unzip. If you guys don't have that installed, just go ahead and install it. And then it will extract all of it. Now there's a lot of different stuff in here, but the major thing that we need is we actually just need to find the actual font files. So there's a bunch of different ones here. And one of the great things about how this works is that we can actually use uh, the install fonts program that we were talking about before with a bunch of different file formats. So now in this case, we actually want the .pfb format, mostly just because it's actually supported by the script. The script supports .ttf and open, yeah, open type format, I think it's called. There might be other ones, but those are the ones that I've actually used before. So these are the actual ones we want. So this is basically all of them. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to go ahead and just copy these all to a directory. So we're just gonna do this as intent. I don't know why I chose that, but let's just do it. And then we're gonna do, um, that should be everything we want to. 
So now we've just moved all the actual fonts to here. Now the main reason we did this is just to get it in the current working directory. Um, mostly just because the install script doesn't seem to like it when you give it a path. So you have to actually have it in the current working directory. Uh, hopefully I can find a solution to that and make a patch and send it in. But for now, this is just the current situation. Now just to make things easy, let's actually just copy the actual install script. And there we go. So now we have the install script and all the files in one directory. Um, this isn't completely necessary. If you just put the install script in your path, it's not that big of a deal. But for those of you guys following at home, I feel like this is probably pretty convenient. So now instead of dash H, we're going to use the following format. All right, so now we're gonna have to use sudo for this, but this will install the font for us. So we do install fonts.sh, then we use the dash S if we have graph installed at user slash share slash graph once again you could just do cd and if you can actually cd into the directory then use this flag otherwise um, it is not necessary now the dash f actually says the family so we're going to make this uh cm in lowercase just because i already have one with capital cm and then you're going to do dash f and then we're going to give it the actual format so i'm going to do this dash r and then we're going to use regular so this is the actual regular font in size 12. And the R here is basically saying that when I use the Roman font, um, so the other ones would be like italic and uh, um, fixed width, all that sort of stuff. So like another one would be CR or CW or I, all that sort of stuff. Um, in this case, this will be using the R for what I call it. Now, when I run that, it will give me some options. It will be, do I want to install it for the PDF driver? I'm going to say yes. This basically tells it that when you're using dash capital T PDF, that it will be able to use this font and then copy it. Uh, yes, we want to do that. And then it will be installed. So now here is just a really simple demo file. So what we can do is we can actually do dot fam and do cm. And then when I open this up, it will actually be using it. So if I just did T is the default one. So here's what the default looks like. And then CM and this changes it to computer modern. Now, the way that this is working is we're doing to FTR is really what it's doing by default. But if I change this to B, it's not gonna be able to find the bold font. So it's just gonna stick with R, same thing with italics. So now let's go ahead and install the actual italic fonts. So now we have this and we wanna just do I. And let's go ahead and find the italic font. Um, there it is. So now you'll see that, that it has an I, and then we want to change this to capital I, and then install it, yes, yes. Now you can change these defaults um, actually using the script, but now let's try this out. And now we have the italic, so doing the same sort of thing. There we go. So now we have the Roman and the italic. Now, finally, let's do the bold. I'm pretty sure this one is just a B, oh, BX12. We want this to be bold. Yep. Yep. And finally, we can edit our file again. And let's check and make sure that the bold font is working properly. And there we go. Now we have the bold font working properly. So now we can do all the sort of stuff that you'd expect. So just to give you an example, there you are. So there you go. And now you can use the computer modern fonts. And in fact, when you go into EQN, it should by default just start using them. And there you go. Now, I'm not too sure if the symbols are actually using the default symbols. These can actually be added later, and I'll hopefully get a chance to show that off in the future. Anyways, guys, I know this video has been pretty short, but I really just needed to get a video covering this out there, and hopefully in the future, I'll actually get to do a better job at covering it. But for now, hopefully this is good enough for a lot of you guys, and you guys can give this a try for yourself. Um, feel free to try this with any font you want. This should basically give you general font formatting for basically any single font that you can think of. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you next time. If you guys are interested in learning more about Groff or other Trough implementations, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell so you guys can notify me in the next video, and like this video so I know you guys are interested. Anyways, see you later.